I played 100 days of Stardew Valley as a slime rancher. Hello everybody, this is GamerGar, welcome back to another Stardew Valley video. The main goal for this challenge is to fill up the farm with as many slime hutches as possible and to get as many slime variations as possible. To make this happen, we need to travel the whole breadth of the land and acquire as many different types of slime eggs that we can get our hands on, including the tiger slime eggs over on Ginger Island and the black slimes that you can get from the witch. To make this challenge even more entertaining and intensive for myself, we are going to incorporate a few extra challenges. The first being to achieve all monster hunter eradication goals. The second, to achieve over 1 million gold. And the third, to obtain the infinity blade. This challenge took hundreds of hours to make, so if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, hit that subscribe button, i greatly appreciate it. The Gamer Guard Discard server is now open, the link is in the description. So if you have discards yourself, jump on in, I'd love to see you there. So let's jump straight into the challenge, and let's have some fun. Day 1 of our epic slime farming adventure begins with planting the parsnips, making a chest of course, and scavenging the land for lovely forge bills, because we are going to use those to make tons of money later on in the game. So as you can see here, we're going to spend all our money on parsnip seeds. You've noticed Pierre looks a bit different, so do all the town folks in this game. That's just a visual mod if you're wondering. Mods will be in the description. Day number two, of course, is a day of fishing. We are going to fish until we flop, sell all the fish for tons of money, which is our usual money-making strategy. And this will be the primary strategy in spring to make tons of money to get the ball rolling on this challenge. Clint paid us a visit on day number 3 because we fished up some copper ore on the previous day. So he's going to give us the schematics there to build a furnace, which we'll need later on. We also go to Willy, sell some fish, purchase the great fiberglass rod and spend the rest of day number 3 fishing. The reason why it's so important to fish on a rainy day, especially in spring, is to get catfish because they sell for lots and lots of money. We're also going to visit Caroline and we're going to work on her with daffodils so we can learn the tea sap recipe later on and that will be a great source of income as well so we can get the ball rolling with slime hutches. So the main tactic of this challenge is to get the slime hutches built as quickly as possible. To make that happen we need money. Best way to get money in spring is through crops, tea saplings and fish hands down. If we can make it into the skull cavern early and get iridium bars that will be a bonus. So I purchased 249 potatoes off pier today on day number 5. It took me the whole day to plant and water those but it will be absolutely worth it in the next few days when I sell those. Day number six we're going down into the mines. The goal here is to get down as far as possible so we can get to floor 100, get that lovely star drop but also so we can access the rest of the resources the mines has to offer such as iron and gold and the occasional mineral or two for example jades and diamonds. So day number seven we get a rainy day super lucky today I don't have to water the potatoes thank god there's a lot of potatoes there. If it wasn't raining, it would take me a lot of hours to get that done. Straight back into the mines, and we're going down as quickly as we possibly can. We're now in the middle section, and there we stop. We're going to go straight back to Clint and sell him some items just to get over the 2,000 gold mark so we can get our first tool upgrade, which should be the pickaxe to a copper pickaxe. And that will probably get us through the rest of the mines without too much hassle. So because today is raining, we are going to fish until we flop again. The more fish we get, the more money we are going to get. We also get another rainy day on day number 8, so we take full advantage of that and fish also. It is finally on to day number 9 and it is time to collect all the lovely spring forageables. These spring forageables will be converted back into spring wild seeds and eventually they will be converted into tea saplings for some huge profits. We get the copper pickaxe off Clint, it's time to go straight back into the mines and make some progress. Slaying 500 dust sprites will reward us with a burglar ring, so if I see dust sprites I will prioritise those and try to kill those straight away. So we get it down to floor 50 and then we treat ourselves to a nice community centre bundle on day number 10 here by giving in 4 spring forgeables. We get back 30 spring wild seeds, plant those straight away. We're blessed with rainy days this time around, I can't believe how lucky I'm getting with rainy days. We spend the rest of day 10 fishing so we can get our hands on more money. Anything we get from the treasures is also welcome. Demetrius also visits us on day 11. We're going to go with the mushroom cave because mushrooms are a lot more profitable. And the mushrooms also help with energy and health when we start doing some serious skull cavern runs later on. Look at all these lovely potatoes. We are going to pick up all these potatoes. We are going to sell these and make a huge profit which isn't too shabby at all for the start of spring. 
We also do even more fishing today, and I got some gens there, super lucky. Level 5 farming, we're going to go with Tiller, of course. Level 6 farming, we can now make quality sprinklers. So it's back down into the mines. We're on floor 76, we're making great progress. Got a ruby there, which is really nice. Bet it down to floor 80, and I got some nice firewalker boots, which is a very nice boot upgrade for me. So the problem here now is inventory slots. I needed a backpack upgrade, and I needed it now. So we got level 5 mining, we're going to go with the miner of course, plus 1 ore per vein. I sold the potatoes today because I wanted to wait for the 10% farming proc to activate before I sold the crops to make 10% more money. Day number 13, we are just watering wild spring seeds. Once that's finished, back into the mines. Progress down to floor 100, that gives us our first star drop of the challenge. Not only will it replenish our energy, but it will also increase our maximum energy. We also get level 5 combat, and on day 14, it is straight into Georgia to get the bus upgrade 40,000 gold. We also get a backpack upgrade 2,000 gold, but why stop there? We had some money left over, so we get the second backpack upgrade as well, which gives us access to all slots in the game. So I made it down to floor 120 as well, and I got the skull key. We can now do skull cavern runs, so and we're not even halfway through spring yet. Suiting very well in terms of general progress. So day number 15, we are going to begin by watering our lovely spring wild seeds. Just two days left on those. I also pay a visit to the desert, get some triple shot espressos, get some spicy eels. We are now ready for a skull cavern run. The main goal of today is just to get to floor 25 so we can get 10,000 gold off key. The more gold we get, the bigger progress we can do. I got super lucky here on floor 38. I got a red slime egg. I was super happy with that because I needed those eggs to use in the slime hutches later on once I start building those. And what you're going to find is that when the slime hutches do start, they will spring up very quickly. Prismatic shard as well, which is pretty nice. Got that from an iridium vein. That was only on floor 41, so super lucky there. On floor 49, I got even luckier and another red slime egg inside a treasure chest. I couldn't ask for better than that to get two slime eggs in one day. Those slime eggs, of course, were not going to be sold. They were going to be kept for slime incubation. I got a prismatic shard as well from another treasure room. Today was just one of those days. It was a super lucky day for myself. So before the day finished, I converted one prismatic shard into a galaxy sword, and I'll keep the other one then for use later on. Robin, on day 16, it was time to build the first of many slime hutches. Now the slime hutch counter begins, you will see, on general, one slime hutch built every few days. The farm will be filled up to the top with slime hutches. I also get Clint to break open a ton of geodes here, and the reason why I do this is because I want to get access to the sores, to the Statue of Uncertainty to use it later on. We finally get access to Caroline's lovely sunroom from giving her so many daffodils. She'll send us on a lovely recipe for the tea saplings the next day. The rest of today was spent cutting down trees for two reasons. Number one, for wood, and for number two, to free up space for slime hutches. 10,000 gold from Mr. Key for making a plus 425, and the tea saplings from Caroline. We were off to a magnificent start, and we're only still in spring. We were doing so well. Look at all these lovely spring forgers. We were going to pick up all these. We're going to convert these into wild spring seeds, and we're going to further convert these into tea saplings. That's where the wood comes into play. 52 tea saplings right there. That's going to sell for a ton of money. Straight back into the regular mines. Now what we're looking for here are dust sprites. Because I wanted to complete dust sprite monster eradication goal as quickly as possible to get the burglar ring. Because if you have the burglar ring, if a slime does drop a slime egg, there's a chance you can get double slime eggs. And that's going to save me a lot of time and resources. Marlin visits me today because the slime hutch has been built. He gives me a free green slime egg, which is great. All slime hutches come with a free slime incubator, which is really handy. Plus four traps. Now we can set up sprinklers for those traps eventually, but for now, we're just going to have to water it manually. It was time for another slime hutch to be placed. That will be built in a few days. And of course, we're going to go back to the Great Morris. And we're, this time, we're going to get the minecarts because I wanted to fast travel between areas in the game so I could save time. I also go to Clint. I get my steel pickaxe back off him, which is great. Straight back into the mines. We're farming more dust sprites. And this will continue until we have 500 dust sprites killed. If we come across regular slimes or other enemies, of course, we'll kill them too because it all counts at the end. Day 19 begins with clearing up some more space on the farm, and then we're going straight back into regular mines, and we're looking for slimes, but more importantly, we're looking for the dust sprites. The burglaring is worth the time effort. 
great thing about dust sprites is that most of the time they appear in large numbers, so getting the kill count to 500 isn't that bad. Our first green slime has been born, so I fill up the troughs straight away with water, but it will need a mate so we can start making babies so our slimes can multiply, which means we can get slime balls. That in turn will give us slime, and then we can use that slime to make more slime eggs. And this cycle just goes around infinitely. <laughs> Eventually, we will make loads of money off slime eggs, and of course, we get Robin to build us, yes, another slime hutch. Back to Clint for a lovely copper axe, thank you very much, Clint. And this time, because we had the copper axe, we could get rid of all the lovely small tree stumps around the farm, making more space for future slime hutches. At the end of the day, we get level 5 forage, so we go with Gather, which is a chance to get double foraged items, which is really good. Back down into the regular mines on day 21, and we are slaying more lovely dust sprites. So the great thing about this is not only are we getting coal, which we need to smelt tons and tons of bars, but we're also getting slimes as well, and we're getting other monsters along the way, so the monster eradication goals won't be too difficult to complete when we get into the later part of the game. So another slime hutch has been built this time. I'm going to put in a red slime egg, which I got from the Skull Caverns, and that will breed red slimes in that room. We're also going to get Robin to build, yes, another slime hutch. How many slime hutches will we have by the end of the challenge? We get the gold pickaxe back off Clint, which is really good. And we're going to go to Marlis and we're going to get the bridge repair done so we can get into the quarry and access the resources there. We finally defeat 500 dust sprites. We get the burglaring. This means farming slime eggs will be a little bit better. It's got two green slime eggs there, which is great. Now, slimes only have a 1% chance to drop a slime egg. So sometimes you can end up massacring hundreds of slimes only to get one slime egg. So day 23, we're in the Skull Cavern, but we're not looking to get down as deep as possible. We were prioritizing slimes today because we wanted to get the 1000 slime kill count done so we could get the slime charmer ring. But at the same time, we were also hunting for purple slime eggs. Emily visits us the next day and she's going to give us access to her sewing machine because we picked up some cloth in the Skull Cavern. Today we were going to venture into the quarry, so the first thing we're going to do is blow up all of these resources and collect them. Once this is done we're going to go straight into the quarry cave and we're going to grab the golden scythe. These floating skulls also drop really good items such as rings and if you're super lucky they can also drop magic rock candies. Once we're finished with the quarry, we're going straight back into the Skull Cavern, and we are farming slimes. These big slimes are perfect to get up the slime kill count, because sometimes a big slime can drop loads of little regular slimes that you can kill. There's also a chance they can drop purple slime eggs now that we have slime hutches on the farm. So we're getting Robin to build another slime hutch, which is great, and if you're wondering where we're getting all our money, it's from primarily selling Iridium Bars. We get a Steel Axe off Clint today, we're going to go with another upgrade. This time we just go with the panning. We don't actually pan in this challenge, I'm just getting these upgrades so I can get access to Ginger Island as quickly as possible. I did however need a lot more money so I did a little bit of fishing and on day 26 I'm going straight back into the Skull Cavern to slay more slimes. Ambush rooms like this are absolutely perfect because they're filled up to the top with slimes. I was getting the occasional diamond which was great. We also went to Robin and we're going for another slime hutch, we're going to put that on the farm right up the top left there. Once we're finished with that, we are going to smelt more Iridium into Iridium bars to sell for money, and we're also going to make some bombs. And I made a load of bombs here because I had so much coal from killing dust sprites, and I had some iron ores as well, just from doing the occasional mines and the Skull Cavern. Straight back down into the Skull Cavern itself to slay even more slimes. What's really cool about the burglar ring as well is that if you slay the big slimes that have pink cakes inside, there's a chance you can get double pink cake. And pink cake is really good for giving you back health and energy. Level 10 mining, we're going to go with blacksmith, bars are worth 50% more. And there is a large slime that had pink cakes, we just got two pink cakes back there which was so nice. That's what I love about the burglar ring, it just gives you double of almost every sort of drop you can get from a monster. So more diamonds today, followed by a purple slime egg, praise the lord, it took me hundreds of slimes to kill to actually get that purple slime egg. So that was going straight into a slime incubator, right there. Time to get another slime hutch off Robin, so we're going to place this one just underneath the greenhouse there. So right now, we do have a lot of slime hutches on the farm, but we are not even close to how many we are going to have by the end of this video, not even close by a long shot. The rest of the day is spent clearing up resources on the farm to make space for future slime hutches because there will be a lot. Back to Morris, of course, we have a lot of gold from selling Iridium Bars, 
we're going to go with the final upgrade, the greenhouse. This means we can now cross over to Ginger Island once a few tasks have been met. We're also going to go with an upgrade here with Clint to get him to upgrade the axe and gold axe just so I can cut down trees a lot faster. So this time we are smelting quartz into refined quartz because we need that to make more slime hutches. Day 31, a lovely visit from Evelyn. She's going to give us the garden pot because we unlocked the greenhouse. She is not the big surprise for today. Straight after Evelyn, we get another visit from Gunther. And we wanted a visit from him for ages. Gunther is going to give us the key to the sores, which means we can go down and access the Statue of Uncertainty and swap around our professions to maximize resources gained every single day. I made loads of lightning rods today because tomorrow was a stormy day and I needed battery packs to get over to Ginger Island. I got Robin to make yet another slime hutch, I put that one up there close to the greenhouse as well, eventually we'll work our way down with those. I also got a super surprise party from Morrison Co today, look at them go, look how great they look with all their lovely Georgia caps on and they got Morris then with the bow tie. I was going to get a lovely Georgia machine off them. So I started farming floor 86 here on day 31 because it's an ambush floor. Great thing about ambush floors, they will remain the same for the whole day. So I can very easily farm this floor for the whole day. This means I can get my kill count up on slimes super fast. There's also a chance I can get red slime eggs from killing those slimes as well. I finally get my iridium pickaxe off Clint on day 32. Super happy with that. That was the last of the pickaxe upgrades. Once I got that, it was straight off into the Skull Cavern, and we were killing more slimes. Of course, if we got some slime eggs, it was great. I also got the occasional Iridium Bar, which was nice as well, because those things sell for 1500 gold a pop. Day 33, look at all the battery packs I got. It was time for another slime hutch. This time, we're working downwards, so this is going to the bottom of the farm. So I had my steel axe, time to get into the secret woods to get some hardwood because I needed hardwood, a lot more hardwood, to get access to Ginger Island. So today is spent just breaking open all of the hardwood stumps, then we're going straight back into the regular mines and we're farming red slimes. Red slime eggs is a bonus of course, but primarily we're just after the kill count for 1000 slimes to get the slime charmer ring. So it's time to fix up Willy's boat, we have the resources, and this will bring us over to Ginger Island. Ginger Island has an absolute ton of resources on it that we can use to make this challenge go a little bit smoother. Once all the materials have been given, we're going straight back into the Skull Cavern to kill some slimes. I just got super lucky there as well, I got another purple slime egg, iridium bars are welcome, diamonds are welcome, the burglar ring increases the odds of all these lovely slimes dropping great loot. That purple slime egg is going to go straight into a slime incubator. And then at day 35, we are going over to Ginger Island. So the goal here isn't to get all of the golden walnuts. We just want to get 100 so we can access Key's secret walnut room. So we can start farming up Galaxy Souls to get the Infinity Blade, which is one of the main challenges of this 100 day video. So I just got enough golden walnuts today to get this house built. That means I now have a ginger island farm. We won't be really using that farm. The main goal is here just getting this key secret walnut room and also farming these tiger slimes for tiger slime eggs. Now there is only a 1% chance these tiger slimes will drop an egg and these tiger slimes don't appear in great numbers. So it could potentially take us quite some time to actually get the tiger slime egg that we need. But it's okay because in the meantime we're still getting other resources that are coming in super handy. For example, cinder shards that we can use to enchant weapons. That is the crusader enchant for our galaxy sword. So I didn't have enough stone to get a slime hutch which means I had to buy some off Robin to get her to build the next slime hutch because it does require a lot of stone. And that's going around the farm right there. Once that's built we're straight back over to Ginger Island farming more tiger slimes because I was committed to getting the tiger slime egg as quickly as possible. Even though they weren't dropping the tiger slime egg for me, they were dropping other great stuff that I could sell, such as mango saplings, diamonds, and rare minerals, which was really cool. So I put three rubies into this galaxy sword, increasing its base attack power, meaning the slimes will die a lot faster now, so I can get through the content a lot faster. I got the dragon two cutlass in a chest today. I was considering swapping my main weapon to that, but decided not to because I will have an infinity blade eventually. I finally got the kill count for slimes, it was day 40, time to get my lovely slime charmer ring. I also got the vampire ring too for killing bats. 
So I was just customizing the slime hutch today. The reason why I put flooring down in that area is so that slime eggs don't appear there. They only appear in areas that don't have flooring. It just makes it easier to collect the slime balls when you're going in. Because eventually we're going to have tons of slime hutches. So slime ball collection will take a full day. So this time we're going visiting Krobus, but the main reason we're visiting Krobus is to get the Wicked Statue recipe. Eventually we will get the star drop off him, but for now we needed the money for future slime hutches, because slime hutches are expensive. The main reason you put this statue in a slime hutch is to prevent the witch from turning those slimes into black slimes. We will however leave one slime hutch without a statue, so that hopefully the witch will convert those slimes into black slimes later on. So it was back to Ginger Island, and this time I tried the pylon puzzle, and it took me a few goes, but I'm actually slowly but surely getting better at this puzzle. Eventually I done it and I got awarded with three more gold walnuts. That means I was getting closer to Key's secret walnut room. I had a lot of tarot tubers planted from all the tiger slimes I've been killing, so I decided to plant those and harvest those in hopes to get more gold and walnuts from pulling them up. I also rescued Professor Snail to get access to his artifact hunting quest, because I needed to get the golden walnuts from that to get into Key's secret walnut room. The rest of the day was spent in the volcano dungeon. Day number 44, it was time to get all of the lovely battery packs that the storm had generated the day before. This time we were getting a shed from Robin because I needed a place where I could put slime egg presses which make eggs because eventually we're going to end up getting hundreds and hundreds of slime on a daily basis and the slime eggs were going to be a great source of income for the latter part of the challenge. It was also time to start decorating the farm as well, so I started putting down some pats. Back into the skull cavern and I was killing more slimes primarily, to try to get more purple slime eggs. Eventually, eggs gotten from fell slimes won't go into slime incubators. I'll just sell them and make huge amounts of money from them, because slime eggs do sell for a lot of money. Having the slime charmer really equipped it was a lifesaver, it means I didn't have to fear the damage that these slimes do anymore, because some of these slimes, especially the red, purple and tiger slimes, can dish out some serious damage if you let them. So we're back in the regular mines today, primarily farming stone. That night I just smelt some bars as well for iridium because I needed some money because my funds were getting a bit low. Day 47 we are back to Robin and this time we are going to get the big shed upgrade, followed by decorating the farm which took me the whole day because I want to make the slime rancher farm look really nice when the challenge is finished. This means I needed lots of wood and lots of stone to make the paths that were required. Let me know when the challenge ends if you liked the slime hutch farm or not, I appreciate the comment. So it was back into the volcano dungeon on day number 48 and we were still looking for tiger slime eggs. Could we get one today? No we didn't. <laughs> it is super rare, there's only a 1% chance a slime will drop an egg. So we're going to have to do more farming in that volcano dungeon to get one. Because we have to remember one of the challenges are to get all slime variations, that includes the tiger slime. We will need at least two tiger slime eggs. If we're lucky, that give us a male and a female, so they'll start breeding up babies for us. Robin will make us another slime hutch of course, and this time I'm going to put loads of crystallariums into the big shed. These crystallariums, however, are going to generate something that you won't expect. So I was back to Ginger Island today, unlock the beach so I can get access to more areas to get more golden walnuts, so I can access Key's secret walnut room, which we just accessed here, which was great. Now we could take on the key quests, which would give us back key gems so we can purchase some real nice items. We're gonna go with Key's Prismatic Grange because that awards the most gems, 35 gems in total. For the blue items, I just went with the Judge Cola. I had all the other items needed as well to complete the quest except the red items. To fix that, I just made some cherry bombs using the copper ores and coal that I had. And I had tons of copper ore from all the dungeon crawls that I've been doing. Back into the volcano cave today and there we go, two tiger slime eggs from a slime tanks to the burglar ring, which was absolutely magnificent. They sell for 8,000 gold a pop. They are rare, but we weren't gonna sell them. Oh no, we were gonna incubate these and start a tiger slime family back on Stardew Valley. So I was super happy with this. It was a super rare find. And all we're missing now to complete the slime variety challenge is the black slimes. So these crystallariums are generating fire quartz. Reason for this, we need tons and tons of fire quartz to make slime egg presses. So as we can see here, I was able to make 20 slime egg presses using coal, fire quartz and battery packs. 
So they are quite expensive to make, but they are worth it because we need these to convert slime into slime eggs. So, look at all the slime eggs we have today. This is the first slime hutch we put down. We've got lots of slimes in here now from our slimes breeding with each other. And we can convert 100 slime into a slime egg using a slime egg press. So as you can see as well, I have a lot of iridium sprinklers now put down inside of the slime hutches. That means I don't have to water those traps every single day. The sprinklers will do the job for me. So day 52, we'll go back into the skull cavern and I got super lucky there. Got a purple slime egg. I will incubate that the next day. I also got some prismatic shards today as well, so I'm super happy with that. All of these ambush rooms that I got were considered a blessing because it meant a possibility for more purple slime eggs for me. And I just got another one right there. So that was a great day indeed. I got Robin to build me, yes, another slime hutch. This is going to the bottom right hand side of the farm. Day 53, look at all these lovely fire carts. But more importantly, look at all our fabulous slime eggs. Green being the most common, then blue, then red, then purple. These slime egg presses will not generate tiger slime eggs. You can only get those from killing tiger slimes over on Ginger Island. I got the Dark Talisman today, just to start the quest for the Magical Link with the Wizard. I also went back to Krobus too and I purchased a lovely star drop off him, because maximum energy is always a great thing. It also means I can do a lot more on the farm, or I can gather a lot more resources so I don't have to tuck into food. I also got the Magical Link as well, I'm going to give that to the Wizard now, which will activate his Magical Terminal, and this means I can use it later on if I have the money to get things such as Warp Obelisks. The rest of the day was spent putting slime into slime egg presses. Day 55, we get Robin to make us another slime hutch. How many more slime hutches can we fit on this farm? I also got Clint to upgrade my axe as well. We're going for the gold axe so we can cut down trees faster. So these lovely slime balls that the slimes are making are becoming more common now because the slime hutches are becoming more active. It was the last day of summer. We're getting through the challenge. We're more than halfway there. We're going to finish out the last day by just going to this event here, which is the Moonlight Jellies. Other than that, today was primarily spent cutting down trees to get wood, and it was just processing iridium ores, and it was also collecting slime balls from all of the slime hutches, because there's a lot of slime hutches now on the farm. Day 57 is the first of autumn, and look at all these lovely slime eggs that we get. We also get our gold axe back off Clint, which is great. And we're going to pick up a key quest. We're going to go for four precious stones. We just have to find four prismatic shards easy enough we spend a lot of money today on bombs from the dwarf and we are straight back down into the skull cavern so what we're going for now are more monster eradication goals and iridium ore of course to make more money day 58 we are smelting ores into bars i'm also going to make some slime incubators using iridium bars and slime that's 23 incubators right there I have a big plan for those incubators <laughs> more prismatic shards in the skull cavern i got super lucky I also put on a treasure chest. We also get access to the special quest board as well. We're going to go with Tropical Fish here from Willy. And because we had some money left over, I treated myself to an Iridium Rod, a Trap Bobber, and some bait. So I had to fish up five Lionfish, five Blue Discus, and five Stingray, which took me almost two full days to do. But I needed to do it because I was coming to the end of my tether when it comes to the Skull Cavern runs. It was a nice change of pace. Day 61, it was back to the slime hutches. Look at all the slime balls here. This is a slime hutch filled up to the top with slime balls. Look at all the slime I'm going to get back here. I'm going to get back hundreds of slime from these. Back into the shed, of course, and our lovely slime egg presses are good to go. So I'm going to sell all those eggs, make loads of money. So I made crystal floors now today, and I can make those because you just need refined quartz to make those, and I had hundreds of refined quartz. I also made more stone walkway floors as well, so I can decorate the farm even further, make it look nice. So what I'm doing with the slime incubators are I'm putting them outside because I want to have slimes outside as well as inside the slime hutches. Now slimes that are created outside will not generate slime balls. Oh, I'm just doing it for the purposes of having a cool looking slime rancher farm. There's only so many slime hutches you can fit on your farm, unfortunately. <laughs> so I'm going to fill up all these slime incubators with green slime eggs because the green ones are just so common. They're one of the most common eggs you'll come across, especially if you use slime egg presses. We're back in the skull cavern and of course we're killing monsters that we see for monster eradication goals. The rock crab is of no exception, of course. 
I get a crystallarium here inside a treasure floor. I'm so happy with this. I also put the furnaces inside the mines because I needed space inside my farm, you know, for slimes and for more slime punches to come. So I just wanted to show a really funny scene here. This is the straw version of Maru. She goes into the change room and she comes out a human version. <laughs> so if the person who made the mod watches this video, that's something that you might address. It was time for another key quest. We're going to go with four precious stones because it's a super fast one to complete. Because I had so many prismatic shards from doing so many skull cavern runs. I also spent some time today decorating the farm. I'm just going to speed up the game here a little bit just to show you what the farm looks like at the moment. So I thought to myself it looks pretty good, but let me know in the comments if you like the style that this farm is taking on. So day 65, I'm just bringing the prismatic stones back to complete that quest. That's giving me more key gems to work with. I had enough to purchase two galaxy souls, but not enough to purchase a third. I needed just a few more key gems to get the third galaxy soul so I could upgrade my galaxy sword to an infinity blade. So I made more slime egg presses and I also am going to go to the mines here as well. Get some more iridium bars to make more slime incubators. Because I wanted to put more slime incubators on the farm to have even more slimes appear outside. So I'm going to put these little incubation zones all over the farm. Now I could have put a slime hutch here as well but I thought the farm would look a bit boring if it was just stacked up to the top with slime hutches. I thought this would make it look a little bit more interesting. So I get more slime eggs today from our lovely slime egg presses and primarily with the green slime eggs we're going to use those for the incubators because the green ones are just so common. Back down into the skull caverns of course and this time our priority are just monsters for the monster eradication goals. So we're going for serpents, we're going for rock crabs, we're going for mummies of course. All of those monsters are on the kill list for us. Any sort of iridium ores that we get we'll smelt those into bars. With the bars we have a choice where we can sell them if we need money or we can just convert them back into slime incubators if we want more slimes to appear outside of the farm. So day number 67 and as you can see now a trend is starting to form where every few days we go into the slime hutches and get the slime balls. Get the slime, put it into slime egg presses, rinse and repeat. So I'm going to go to Clint today, I'm going to blow all my money on coal because I'm struggling on coal a big time and I need that coal to make more slime egg presses. I also needed it to smelt more bars to make more money. I got super lucky today, the witch finally visited the farm and she spewed her magic on the slime hutch that didn't have the wicked statue so those slimes will now become black slimes and eventually they will start mating and baby black slimes will enter the scene. So the variety challenge for the slimes is now complete, we now had one of every slime in the game inside our lovely slime rancher farm. All that was left was to just make the farm look great, get the infinity blade and make over 1 million gold. And if you take a look at all the eggs we're getting now, it looks like we're going to achieve all those goals. So eventually we're not going to be putting these slime eggs into the slime incubators, we're just going to be selling them to make some money. And when that happens you'll see firsthand just how profitable these slime punches can be. As you can see there when I woke up I got a huge list of notifications on the left hand side of my screen. These notifications were that some slimes were born and some slimes escaped. So unfortunately the farm can only hold a certain amount of slimes every single day. It will automatically release slimes at the end of a day so the game doesn't overload when it comes to internal processing power. So day number 70, we're getting there, we're almost finished with the challenge. The trend continues of farming slime to get slime eggs. So because we have so many slime hutches now on the farm, this process is getting more and more lengthy because there's just so many more slime eggs to get. And because we're getting so much slime, we have to make more slime egg presses to keep up with the demand for slime eggs. So here is another incubation zone, and we're also going to do the same with the greenhouse here as well. We're going to make this another slime incubation zone fill this up with slime incubators and this is going to be a slime greenhouse and this is what it looks like this is our lovely slime greenhouse <laughs> this is going to be a full-on slime rancher farm including the greenhouse i also spent a great majority of resources and time doing up the ginger island farm i want to have a huge slime farm over here 
the biggest slime farm you have ever seen. It was time for more key quests, we're going for Key's Hungry Challenge. We have to make it to floor 100 without eating any foods. For the Star Giovanni Fair, I thought it'd be a good idea to put my slime eggs and other dungeon crawling items into the Grange display, but it didn't work out the way I hoped for and I only got third place. That didn't really matter because I just gambled them all in green and got the star tokens I needed to get the star drop. So today is always a great day to get your hands on a star drop, even if you don't get a great place. When it comes to the Grange display, you can always just gamble on green until you get the star tokens you need. Back to Rabbit, of course, day 73. But this time it wasn't to get stone for slime hutches, it was to get stone for staircases. I wanted to get as many staircases as possible so I could complete Key's Hungry Challenge. I also went into the shade and I got all these lovely fire quartz, replaced them with jades so I could trade those in on Sundays for even more staircases for future Skull Cavern runs. The rest of the day was spent just running through all of the slime hutches and all the slime balls putting those into the slime egg presses to get back other slime eggs to sell. <laughs> I had 82 staircases. Was it enough? Let's find out. Day 74, we're going for Key's Hungry Challenge. So I took some damage here as well, you know, but what's great about Key's Hungry Challenge is that sometimes the big slimes can drop hearts when you kill them and you get back health. Just got a Monster Hunter Eradication goal there for the, the Rock Crabs. Super happy with that. A purple slime egg from a chest, super happy with that. And of course I made it to floor 100, so I got the prize of the key gems. So, I went back to Ginger Island on day 75 and I had to remove my slime farm because the slimes just weren't, they just weren't staying on the Ginger Island farm. They all disappeared after the night. That was a huge waste of time and resources. <laughs> I did however get the Infinity Blade, which was really nice. That is another... Goal completed, yes. So we're going really well in terms of the goals. Day 76, we're going to get more jades, we're going to get more slime eggs. Look at all these beautiful slime eggs that we're getting. It's just fabulous. What are we going to do with these slime eggs? We're going to sell some and we're going to keep some. So I feel sorry for Pam standing by the bus every day on her own. We're going to set her up with her very own slime family. We're going to make some slime incubators, going to fill these up with all different sorts of slimes. I also met some slime incubation zones in the actual Pelican Town itself so that the slimes can interact with the Sergio Valley population and who knows, maybe they can even learn some English. Maybe people can coexist with the slimes, we can all live in peace. If the dwarves and the void people can do it, maybe the humans and the slimes can do it too. Let's find out. Day 77, we are getting there with the challenge. So I also picked up a quest here now to get some ginger. I needed 100 ginger in total to complete the uh, Special Orders quest. So I spent a great deal of time on ginger island getting ginger. This 79 is the usual, getting slime eggs, going through all the slime hutches, getting as much slime as possible, putting it back into the slime egg presses to get back more slime eggs. And as you can see, the slime eggs sell for magnificent amounts of money. Look at the purple slime egg, it sells for 5,000 gold. The green slime egg, which is the most common one, that sells for a thousand gold. That's more than a diamond. So slime eggs can get you tons of money. So our lovely horse is ready to go, or should I say slime. Yes, this is a giant slime we are riding around in. Look at it go. Called the slime Rimuru. And if you don't know where that name comes from, don't worry about it. <laughs> back to Ginger Island, we completed yet another puzzle, more gold and walnuts for us. And we're back on the hunt again for ginger. We need a hundred in total. So any ginger we do see, we hop out of the ground straight away. Back to the volcano, of course, to see if we can get more tiger slime eggs. And day 81 begins with the usual slime maintenance. Once the slime maintenance is done with, we're back over on Ginger Island to farm more ginger. So what we're looking for now are shadow brutes and shadow shamans because we wanted to get the kill count for those. So we were going to farm those for the next couple of days just to complete the last few monster eradication goals that we needed. The black slimes were multiplying, which was great. They did start off with just two. Now there's a whole family of them, which is great to see. Those black slimes will get bigger and bigger until there's a total of 20, because each slime hutch can hold a total of 20 slimes. So it was back down into the mines to 83, and again, we were looking for more shadow people. So shadow shamans, shadow brutes, we're all on the menu. And the great thing about this is that 
They were also dropping really good items. Just got a prismatic shard there off one of them, which was super rare. Also super nice, of course. Look at all of these slime eggs that we're getting. We're going to make tons of money. 107 staircases ready to go as well. If we ever decide to get another quest from Key. The Hungry Challenge, for example, would be super easy to do now. Almost 140,000 gold made today from primarily selling slime eggs, which is really good. So this time we're going to go with Key's Cuisine, ship 100,000 gold worth of freshly cooked items. To make this work, I needed Robin to upgrade my house so I could actually cook items. And I also had the Hot Java Ring, so enemies that I slayed had a chance to drop coffee or triple shot espressos. There's the Monster Hunter goal for the Void People, super happy with that. One step closer to getting the Monster Slayer Hero achievement. So today was the usual slime egg presses, getting the slime eggs. This time I was hunting down skeletons, I needed to kill skeletons for another Monster Hunter goal, so they were on the menu. But more importantly, the skeletons also dropped coffee when I killed them. So that was really good as well. I got the triple shot espresso recipe off Gus. So I was going to use that to complete Key's Cuisine quest. So I'm at 180 triple shot espressos today. That would get me a lot of money. But not enough to complete the quest. I still needed to make more. So it was down into the mines. And I decided that to farm the insects down here on this level. Would be the quickest way to go about it. Because each insect had a chance to drop a coffee or a triple shot espresso. I was also going for monster eradication goals as well. So that was the goal done for insects, which was great. I now needed to get the doggies up, so I was now hunting for doggies as well. So day 89 was smelting bars. And once we're finished smelting with the bars, we're going to have a look at the quests. Robin wants 80 hardwood. That's simple to do now because we have access to Ginger Island, so I just cut down all of the Ginger Island hardwood trees to complete that quest no problem at all. Also back into the secret woods and I got the hardwood inside there as well. Day 90 we're getting more lovely slime eggs so we're going to sell all those. I also completed Robin's quest for the hardwood. Oh if you're wondering I also failed the ginger island quest for ginger because I just couldn't get enough. So I had 8 days left to cook up more triple shot espressos. It was back to the mines to see if I could get more coffees to convert into triple shot espressos. The hot java ring has to be one of the most overpowered rings in the game because it gives coffee drinks when you say enemies which is just fantastic. So we were still more enemies and the great thing about the insects is that there is a chance that the insects can actually drop ancient seeds you know which you need to grow ancient fruits. So that was the monster slayer goal for the dinosaurs completed so we were getting there. The best way to handle this monster eradication goal is to just fight the dinosaurs whenever you get a room like that because you don't need to kill too many to complete the goal. I made it down to floor 100 today and I got this special scene from Key where he gives me a drink that I can take that increases my health by 25. This is only possible when you unlock that quest from a secret note and you get that from the magnifying glass. So I finally met over the million gold, I treated myself to a desert obelisk. This way I didn't have to use any more warp totems to go to the desert, I could just go there now whenever I pleased. So the goal to make over the million gold has been completed. But why stop there, let's try to make as much money as possible. As we can see here as well, we completed all of the monster eradication goals for all the enemies in the game. So that is another goal completed, which was great. I believe that's all the golds now that we've set out in this game as completed, which was fantastic. I also spoke to Gil and I got tons of rewards there from completing Master Eradication goals, including the Napalm Ring, which is a really good ring for slaying tons of enemies at once. The Napalm Ring will make an enemy explode when defeated. If an enemy that explodes kills another enemy, that enemy will also explode, which means you can chain up huge explosions. You have to be super careful with the napalm ring though, especially if you're inside a slime hutch that if you destroy one of your slimes with a napalm ring, you will destroy all of your structures, especially if there's loads of slimes there. So I made even more money to death beside the slime eggs, day 95 and the usual trend continues in the farm, but this time look what I'm doing. I'm putting slime incubators around pelican time because I want more slimes to be integrated in with the people of Stardew Valley. Also treated myself to a lovely iridium breastplate just to spruce things up a little bit because I had the, the helmet from the monster hunter goals. Now I really looked at the part. Back into the volcano dungeon to get more resources to sell, to get more money. I was really hoping for the tiger slime because they were so rare. 
But I made it to the top again, I combined my hot java ring with a napalm ring. So that's a nice combination. Look at all the black slimes I have now, I have tons of them. And they're generating loads of slime eggs for me, which is really nice. So I'm going to get all the slime here. These are going to go into the slime egg presses. Look at all the egg presses we have now, we have loads of them. Look at all the eggs we're going to get back on day 98. We were going to sell all these eggs to make an absolute fortune. Now most of them are just green eggs, but if you get the odd red or purple, you get a lot of money for that too. Day 98, and I decided to go back into Pelican Town, try to get these slimes to follow me so I could spread them all over the map, so they could start talking to people. Slimes will greet NPCs when they actually get into their range, which is really funny. So if that does happen, I will try to capture that and show it to you. So I had enough money assembled again to get another obelisk. I just went with the earth obelisk. I was hoping to get another 1 million to get the island obelisk. But I didn't have the bananas anyway, so I wouldn't, wouldn't have been able to get that regardless. Day 100, we finally made it. The 100 day challenge is over. Look at all the slimes in Pelican Town. Look at how peaceful they are. Can people live in harmony with slimes? Of course they can. Slimes aren't the most versatile creature. Just look at them right now. All these slimes want is a good hug. As we can see, I'm not taking any damage. <laughs> so I just wanted to show you one of the slime pens here. And this is basically an accumulation of putting in tons and tons of slime eggs on a daily basis. As we can see, there are now hundreds of slimes inside here. This is what happens when you destroy hundreds of slimes with a napalm ring. The game will actually freeze because the game just can't process all of the information that's going on at the moment. So the game will unfreeze now in a second and you will see this area basically disintegrate. Just like that. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. I was also curious to see when I get many slime eggs by killing all of these slimes and unfortunately I didn't. I just got a small handful of slime eggs. I honestly thought I'd get a lot more, but I just got a small few. So this is the Slime Rancher Challenge finished with. The main reason I wanted to do this challenge is because I wanted to show people how profitable slime hutches can be. Now it did take a while for the operation to get up and running, but slime eggs are not to be underestimated. They can sell for huge money. So that is the end of this challenge video. I really hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Let me know in the comments if you would have done things differently if you had a slime rancher farm. Also, all mods used in this video will be in the description. So just check out the description if you want to find out what mods that were used. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it if you did. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.